Okay, so this is chapter one, section two, called Powers and Exponents, and this is for Math 8. Um, again, this is just the homework on Alex. These are just example problems, so these are not going to be the same problems you see, or generally should not be the same ones you see. Every once in a while, you may get the same one, but it really shouldn't work out that way. Um, so again, this one's a little different than what students see. This is kind of just a teacher um, preview page. So I don't see a, a due date on here, but students will see a due date. You have one of an unlimited attempt, so this is just telling me it's the first time I'm taking it. Again, unlimited attempts. I can take it as many times as I would like, and that's true for students as well. Um, and this tells me I have five questions on here. It'll also give me the best score and partial credit is enabled, which means if I answer one of the five questions and I get it correct, I get the credit for that one question. I don't have to answer all five to get credit for this assignment. Make sure you submit your assignment. Don't just leave it. Once you started it, you need to finish it. Doesn't mean finish it um, completely, you know, that you have to answer all five questions. What it means is you need to click the submit button. Okay, be, and I want to be very clear about that because otherwise it's going to lock you out of everything. Okay, so it'll make you do this one next if you don't do this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click start. And I need to resize this just a little bit so that I can actually have that other piece next to me there. All right, so when we're talking about exponents here, remember this is not multiplication. Well, it is multiplication. I, I want to correct the way I was going to say that. It doesn't mean five or 10 times five. What, it, what it's telling you is here's my base and here's my exponent. Exponent, exponent. And it's actually a way to write repeated multiplication very quickly. So um, instead of having to write 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tens. Well, this is what 10 to the fifth power means. It means I'm multiplying 10 by itself five times, okay? So the exponent tells me how many times to use the base, but it doesn't mean 10 times five. I'm being very kind of thorough about that one because it's the biggest mistake I see made on this one is that students just multiply the base and the exponent for the answer. Nope. The exponent tells me how many times to use the base. Okay. So if we go through here, we go 10 times 10, we get 100, right? 100 times 10, we get 1,000. 1,000 times 10, I get 10,000. And this one's a little easy because it just, you know, I add a zero to the end each one and now I get 100,000. So 10 to the fifth power is 100,000. And I can come over here and I can type in 100,000. I think if you don't put the comma in, it'll accept it. In fact, let's go ahead and try it. Um, I believe it'll accept it. It might give me a warning and say that's not the proper way to write it. Yeah, so this your answer is correct. However, a number this large should be written using commas um, for every thousandth place. So it didn't mark me wrong, but it, it, it's giving me a warning. Um, and after a while, I know Alex will start to mark you wrong on little things like this because it's the proper way to write it. So this is saying alternate answer would have had the comma in it. So it accepted it. It's just telling me, mm, next time write it the correct way. All right, let's continue to the next one here. Do, 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 do. We have evaluate. So we have two pieces here. So I'm going to give myself a new one here just to, to clear out my board. All right, so we have negative 8 squared, and then we have negative 5 cubed. Now, because the parentheses are here, this specifically means that this negative is included. And I, I'm being clear on this because you may very well see on your screen something like this, or even no parentheses at all, just like this. What that means is that the negative is not included. Okay, You need the parentheses to be around the whole number, including the negative, in order for it to be included. And what I mean by included is this means negative 8 times negative 8. So the negative actually is with it. So I'm using the negative 8 twice, not just the 8. So if I had it like this, it would be the 8 twice. The, the negative is not actually included there. Um, so just be careful about that. Um, with this one, I believe everybody should have something along these lines with the negative since we're practicing that. So with this one, two negatives make a positive. And then I can just focus on 8 times 8, which is 64. All right, this one tells me that I'm going to use that negative 5 three times. 
So I'm going to have negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. So now I'm going to do these, these first two, and I'm going to go negative 5 times negative 5. Two negatives make a positive. So 5 times 5 gives me 25. And then I'm going to multiply by 5 again. So 25 times 5, I know I get 125 there, and it was a negative times a positive, so it's negative 125. So be careful about that because that can also kind of mess you up if, with the number of negatives. So I only had two negatives up here, which is why it became a positive. I had three negatives down here, which is why it's, it stayed negative for the answer. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in, 64 and negative 125. Okay, next one. All right, evaluate the expression when m equals negative 6. So when we have this, and I'm going to go ahead and write this out over here. So it's telling me that m equals negative 6. So for these m's, it wants me to replace them with 6. Everything else is going to stay the same. And remember, this is multiplication. Okay, so I'm putting a little multiplication dot there. So now we have to go through and complete PEMDAS to simplify this or to evaluate this. Um, remember, PEMDAS is for simplification. That's the entire purpose of it is to help you simplify your problem. So we want to go through the steps from left to right. So parentheses first. Well, we don't have any parentheses. Exponent next. We do, in fact, have an exponent. So 36, or 6 times 6. Remember, that's not 6 times 2. It's 6 2 times. So 6 times 6 is 36. And then I'm going to bring everything else down. Um, now we have multiplication or division from left to right. So make sure these two kind of go together, as well as addition and subtraction kind of go together. So I have 6 times 7, so that gets me 42 plus 8. All right, so we have 36 plus 42 plus 8. Now we have addition or subtraction. Well, we have all addition, so we just need to add these guys together. Let's see. 2 plus 8, that gets me 10, plus 6 more, that gets me 16, and I'm going to mark my 1 there, so I have my carryover. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 1 more is 8. So it should be 86. Ooh. And I don't know if anybody caught this because this is on camera, but if you did catch it already, good for you. I was supposed to make this a negative 6 in here. And I, I was too quick when I wrote it down. I wasn't paying attention. That would have messed me up. If I type in 86 here, it's going to tell me, uh-oh, try again. Um, in fact, I wonder if it'll warn me on using the negative. Curious. Nope, it just tells me that my answer is incorrect. So it's, it doesn't understand what I did wrong. But what I did wrong was I didn't put the negative in here. So this should not be a positive 42. This should be a negative 42. This is a negative 6 here. This guy doesn't change though. Negative 6 times negative 6 is still positive 36. So the only thing that does change is that 42 shouldn't be positive. It should be negative because 7 times negative 6 will give me negative 42. All right, so now we want to subtract here. What do we get? We had 4, 5, 6. So that would get me negative 6 plus 8. And that would end up being 2. So that's a pretty big difference, actually, changing that from negative to positive. That's, that's a pretty darn big difference, honestly. So let's go ahead and try it again. And yay! So... Um, it happens. We accidentally leave negatives off. Hey, teachers do it just as, as much as students, or it's not as much, I don't know, but mistakes are made. Everybody makes mistakes. So even if you get it wrong, just go back and try again. Sometimes it's easier to kind of go back to the beginning and start over because sometimes going through our work step by step, we don't always see the mistake. But if we go back and try it again, we end up finding it um, by just going through the steps again. All right, let's go ahead and go to number four here. I'm going to erase my work. Boop. All right. And so now we're going to evaluate, write your answers as a fraction in simplest form. So we have two-thirds to the fourth power. Now with this one, we want to remember it means that I'm using this base, which is two-thirds, four times. So it's two-thirds times two-thirds times two-thirds times two-thirds. There are four of them. So with fractions, it's pretty easy. We just multiply across the top and across the bottom. So we go 2 times 2 and I get 4. 4 times 2 and I get 8. 8 times 2 and I get 
16. So I know my top, oh, I'm gonna scooch that down a little bit more, it's gonna be 16. Now I need to do the bottom, and I'm saying top, but numerator, right? Now I need to do the bottom of the fraction, which is our denominator. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. Let's see, 27 times three, we would get 21, six, seven, eight, 81, I believe. So 16 over 81. And one thing, because it said simplest form, if you look at this expanded version, there's nothing there. It's all twos, it's all threes. And remember, two and three are prime numbers. So there's nothing in there that can cancel out. Like there isn't, there aren't twos on the bottom, there aren't threes on the top. So nothing can cancel, which tells me that is simplified. Um, so you, the main thing you want to make sure is that there's nothing that can divide away from both. And in this case, there isn't. The top can only divide by twos. The bottom can only divide by threes. Um, it can also be, you know, nines and fours and things like that. But the, the prime numbers are twos and threes. Okay, so I think enough on that one. 16 over 81. Whoops. That gave me too many boxes. 81. There we go. Check. Yay. All right. Last one here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm going to need a little bit more room. All right. So this last one, we have negative 3 fourths cubed and negative 5 over 3 squared. And it says... Um, write your answers as a fraction. So it doesn't want us to turn it into a decimal. We want to leave it as a fraction. So with this one, and we don't necessarily need to keep expanding it. If you like seeing it expanded, what I mean by that is, you know, literally writing these out like this. If you like seeing it this way, by all means, you can expand them. But you don't necessarily have to keep doing it. This is the idea. This is the visualization of it. This is how many pieces I'm multiplying. Um, as we get to, to bigger and bigger exponents, this becomes a little bit harder um, or more tedious, I guess, to write out. And sometimes, you know, if it's very big exponents, we start to get um, more mistakes in there because there's just more to write down. So if we know what, what 3 cubed is, we can always just work that out. If you don't know what 3 cubed is, then you just need to make sure you go 3 times 3. That's 9, and that's negative times a negative, so it's positive 9. Now I have times negative 3. I know it's going to be negative, positive times a negative. 3 times um, 9 is 27. The bottom, and I gave the negative, I, I know the negative here is in the middle. I ended up giving it to the top. Really, it can be in the middle, which just shows you the whole, the fraction is negative. But when you're doing your calculation, you can either put it on the top with the 3, or you can put it on the bottom with the 4. You don't do both. It goes to either the top or the bottom. You choose. So in my case, I decided that the 3 was negative. Um, but it's, it really doesn't change the problem, whichever one you do. So this is 16. And then 16 times 4. Let's see, what do we get? Um, we get 24 there. 4, 5, 6, 64. So it's negative 27 over 64. And I'm going to scooch this down just so we'd have negative 27 over 64. And again, nothing. This is all threes. This is all fours. So I know nothing is going to reduce there. That's going to be exactly what, it's, um, what it is now. There is no reduction. Um, so this one, we have negative 5 over 3 squared. So remember, that means 3 times 3. So we have 9. There's really nothing else for me to do there because... This is a 5 on top, 3's on the bottom. Those are all prime numbers, so those are done. So let's go ahead and do this and go negative 27. And it might give me grief about putting this negative with the 27. Um, a lot of the time I think it likes to see it in the middle, but we'll see what it says here. Just to kind of test that out, divided by 9. Um, and it automatically put that negative there in the front. So let's see what it says about that negative 27. Um, okay, so in box number one, you could have also written the negative sign in front of the fraction. So it's just giving me grief about putting it up here, but it's not necessarily wrong. It's just the proper way to do it would be this picture down here. So like you can actually see the negative in the middle there. So it still means the same thing. Like I was telling you over here where I applied it to the top, or I could have applied it to the bottom. 
It's just a preference in the way we write it sometimes. Um, so make sure whether or not you finished, you always want to click the submit button. I don't have a submit button because this is the teacher version, but you should have a submit button down here in the bottom right corner. Um, all right, so that was section two, and I will see you in section three.